What's going on guys? Matt Schaefer back here from Sound Effects with another Mosaic audio file conversion here for you. Um, this one's pretty cool. Guy, of course, out of state. Uh, seen our website, some of our YouTube stuff. Inquired about doing something in his 2018 Model S. Uh, this one here is a P100E. And uh, let's get right to it. Kind of show you what we did here. So looking at it, as you open up the trunk, you see the subwoofer enclosure to the left side. Now this interior is um, basically, it's cream color vinyl. It is black vinyl and it also has, of course, your uh, aluminum and it also has your burl wood. So we decided to take a different approach and obviously, we got to work with some new materials on this one here because we don't have, I haven't seen as many tan ones as uh, you see all black or black white or some of the other popular colors. So this one here, we did a different take on the subwoofer enclosure and kind of hard to see the lighting and everything with uh, us shooting in direct daylight here. The sun's just beaming right into the trunk. But uh, you can kind of see what we did and uh, we incorporated the burl wood here to match what you see on the dashboard. So this is basically a, uh, it's a Baltic birch that we stained with the dark walnut to match the Tesla color on, on the dash. And it actually worked out well because the factory burl wood has a lot of grain, kind of crazy looking grain. And this really matches like perfectly with the dash. So really cool how that worked out. Um, again, this is your cream color vinyl. And then we have the cream color Alcantara suede here to match what you see, you know, up on the headliner, the pillars and all that kind of stuff. Um, back behind this grill here, we have a 10 inch Focal Kevlar subwoofer. It's the first time we use this sub in this particular car. We, we've generally used Carbon Illusion um, C10, XLs in the past back here, but uh, this one's a different spin, takes a little bit more power, and uh, we paired it with a Moscone Pro 5-30 five-channel amplifier. Um, looking a little bit closer, we did the silver trim here to match what you see on the dashboard, and again, because uh, the sun is kind of washing all the lights out, we did uh, a little Tesla light up logo here now these are actually individually cut uh letters here that go through this piece of acrylic so these are all pieces of acrylic that you see here even including this grill so each one of these little holes were cut out with the laser machine so i designed this whole grill setup and the grill basically stops where you see this panel start and uh, each one of those holes is actually, it's not a its not a metal grill, it's a acrylic grill. So you can kind of see the sub back there if there's enough light. Um, but yeah, sub sits back there about, I'd say four inches or so. So it's pretty far deep back there. Still a ton of airspace for this particular subwoofer. We also have a light that goes under this wood panel to light it up. Looks really awesome at night. Um, I'll overlay some pictures here so you can physically see what it looks like in a darker application. But yeah, that's pretty much the subwoofer enclosure there. Um, going into the floor, obviously we have our factory floor cover that hides everything that we did as far as the amplifiers. We can pull this up here. And then there is our amp rack, okay? so. Again, a lot of layers, pretty deep. It's kind of hard to see a lot of the lighting because of, again, the direct sunlight beaming into the trunk here. But uh, we did the same thing with the Tesla logo all the way at the back. So those are individual pieces of acrylic that are lasered out of the birch. So the birch was lasered to create those openings. And then I cut the same size emblems out of 3 8 acrylic. So they actually come up and they uh, basically uh, extrude through the through the uh, through the birch there a little bit just to give it some added depth and dimension and then we backlit it with some red lighting just to make it different from all the white lighting that you see so again we incorporated the birch stained it here here we have a acrylic 
split layer here. We have a black, uh, gloss black acrylic panel here with the silver edging to kind of duplicate the aluminum that you see on the dash. And then we have two fans. We have one here and one here, obviously to keep everything symmetrical. One is a push, one is a pull. So basically it is circulating the air underneath everything that you see here to really move any hot air or stagnant air that sits underneath this panel. Um, so again, this is a piece of acrylic and you see a lot of the uh, little circles there that were lasered out to create a grill through the acrylic. So again, this is uh, all acrylic here, which is really cool. There's uh, basically bolt, bolt points that mount underneath this for the fans and everything. So really cool how that all worked out. Uh, we incorporated the cream color suede on top here. And then again, under here, this is of course your uh, cream color vinyl and then you have your cream color suede. We have another set of lights that sit underneath this panel here to give it added depth and dimension under here as well to make this panel look like it's floating. So again, I'll overlay some pictures here in the video so you can kind of get a grasp of kind of what this looks like at night with everything lit up without it being washed out by the sun. And then finally to finish off, we have a, uh, a final walnut panel here that has uh, in a real subtle fashion the mosaic emblem here at the top and that is of course trimmed out with the black acrylic to match the same type of trim that you see down here as well um, but yeah all of these circles here with the grill were made and measured to coordinate with what you see on the amplifier so the amp the side grill here it really brings that that circular mesh pattern all together to make everything really flow um, but again, this is, uh, obviously this is not necessary. It is for the guy who wants it just to feel like it matches with the car. Obviously there's the DNA of the car, um, that you see all into the back area here. And again, it's really cool cause it's super functional. You can bring it to cars and coffee. Uh, you can get groceries so you can get your groceries, put them back there, unload them, and then pop this panel out. If you want to show off some friends or you know show it off at a car show or you know whatever it is but uh again just a really cool thing that a lot of people like to do just because it does have that dual element where it is super functional but yet you can still you know show it off to friends or you know just make it special for the car um that really finishes off what we did back here here are some pictures of what you see underneath all of the aesthetics so this would be the moscone pro 5-30 again it's a five channel amplifier you have channels one through four that are class a b your fifth channel is a thousand watt they're yeah pretty much a thousand watts on the fifth channel which is a d class and then beside your amp we have a moscone pico amplifier this thing is really cool it basically fits in the palm of your hand it is two channels which powers the rear speakers so of course we have a, our front powered active our front uh, 165 uh, kevlar set run active so the woofers and the tweeters run channels one through four on the moscone uh, 5-30 and then we have the rear channels ran off this little pico really cool uh, doesn't take up a lot of space doesn't draw a lot of power and then we have our moscone 6 to 8 aerospace dsp and this is basically going to be responsible for flattening out the signal correcting the signal of the factory radio and also giving us the ability to input a digital source directly into the the processor that way we can have a secondary source coming from you know an iphone android high res player any, any bluetooth device really um but this will make it sound much, much better. Obviously a lot higher end uh, materials are made using this equipment versus, you know, the DACs that you would find into the factory radio. Now let's show you a little bit of what the inside looks like. All right, so getting into the car, you notice a lot of what you see in the back, same type of DNA, uh, same type of burl wood here. You got your uh, cream color vinyl, your Alcantara headliner, Alcantara pillars. Um, so again, we match and we source the material to exactly uh, coincide with what you see in the interior here. Um, 
So kind of giving you a brief rundown of what, what you find is we install this controller. So this is a Moscone mini remote control, and this is gonna be responsible for your main volume. So how it's set up is you have two presets. Preset one is going to be your factory radio, anything on your factory unit here. So anything that's running through this is going to run through this as well. So in this preset, we would keep this turned all the way up, and then we would use our steering wheel controls of the factory radio to basically adjust our volume, just like we would from the factory, right? So this is out of sight, out of mind. You turn it all the way up. This is also your sub volume, so you can keep that all the way up. But like I said, you would use this to adjust all your volume, right? So your your turn signals, your nav voice, uh, your Bluetooth, your collision avoidance, all that stuff still works exactly how it's intended to and runs through the DSP, all the signals corrected, which goes to our new speakers here. So it sounds much, 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 much cleaner. Um, so with respect to preset one being the OEM radio, we would have preset two, which you basically hold this down for a few seconds, then cycle this over until it's on the two, click this and then that would run your high res player your iphone your android um this is generally how you would always run the system unless for whatever reason you just wanted to listen to the streaming app on the tesla but again the audio quality of that is not going to be anywhere in the vicinity the ballpark um of running your phone or running a high res player directly through preset 2. so how we handle that is I basically run a switch that connects to the front left factory mid. So that then goes to the center channel. The center channel gets deleted in any audio setup that we do. So that leaves us room for a speaker. So again, I take the front left factory mid and I basically take that signal and run it to the factory center channel. And by doing that, I have it on a switch. So when I'm on preset two, I can flip the switch, I just make sure this is paused, and then I could still hear turn signals, I can still take Bluetooth phone calls, I can still hear the collision avoidance, the autopilot, all those chimes and warnings through preset two, obviously, because it's just playing through the factory center channel speaker. So that gives me the ability to still keep all the functionality of the factory radio even though we're not using the audio output of the factory radio um maybe watch that back if it didn't make complete sense uh but that's a pretty good description of exactly kind of how we're bypassing the factory radio using preset 2 and still being able to utilize the factory car essentially um so yeah i mean it's it's really functional you don't lose any anything that comes with the factory radio, um, you're just gaining, uh, again, a ton of sound quality, which you're just not gonna get through the factory radio. Keep in mind that, you know, the UHFS system in this car, the upgraded audio, or a Burmeister in a Mercedes or a Porsche or a Fender system or a B&O in an Audi, like all these factory audio systems, they're all paper and plastic. Mark Levinson, it doesn't matter what you have. Their, their only goal is to make it sound as good as other crappy factory audio systems, right? You know, you're not gonna take out a factory speaker and have it be, you know, good quality. Here's a perfect example. I have, this is the factory eight inch woofer, two of them zip tied together. Um, but this is the factory woofer that you pay a lot of money for the UHFS system. It's paper and plastic. You know, it is very, very poor quality. You know, there's nothing to it, you know, when you move the cone, just that area moves, right? So the whole, basically, when you buy speakers, the amount of money that you're spending is gonna be for the amount of quality and components that it's made out of. Obviously, you want the cone to be very, very rigid and stiff, but you want it to be extremely lightweight. Um, so, you know, that's why you find carbon fiber, Kevlar, beryllium, that's why speakers are made out of these materials, because they're extremely light, but they're extremely rigid. Um, where, you know, paper, paper's paper, right? There's, there's no getting around that. Um, and with technology increasing, obviously we use DSPs. 
DSPs are becoming very revolutionary and you can you can hide and mask a lot of stuff within a DSP. So when you pair a DSP with that, with crappy speakers like this, you can actually, the, the manufacturer can now get even cheaper with the speaker because it can mask more. So that's why you're seeing more and more factory speakers becoming worse and worse quality because uh, manufacturers can do more and more with DSP. So it's not like the quality of this audio equipment is progressing uh, with technology and software. They're just getting better at masking how <laughs> crappy the speakers are. So when you pair a great speaker, a great amplifier with DSP, what you're going to hear in a car is, you know, it's going to blow you away when it's set up correctly. And when you're sitting here in your driver's seat and you have a subwoofer in the back, you have your rear speakers, you have your door speakers, you have um, your tweeters. If you're doing a three-way, you have your mids as well. And when you hear a sense of unity within every speaker and you can, you're like, I know there's a speaker there, I see it, but I, it doesn't sound like it's playing. That's when magic happens inside the car. And you're listening to, you know, Michael Jackson or Pink Floyd or, you know, some iconic tracks and you're hearing a sense of space throughout the entire dashboard, right? You're hearing uh, a guitar here, a guitar over there. You can say in your head because of how you're hearing it, they're probably standing about 30 feet apart. Um, you know, your vocals are in the center. He's he's probably five feet in front of these guys. You have your drummer directly behind him, dead center of the dash. And that's when you can start really appreciating music and all music. Um, so, again, it's one of those things where it's audio is not like video. You have to experience what great audio is to understand what great audio is. With TV, you know, we go to bars, we go to the movies all the time and we we keep seeing the changes in progression in video but again you can't do that with audio so the only thing that you're going to do with audio is compare it to the best audio system you've ever heard in a car and let me tell you 99.5 percent of people in the world have no idea what great audio is and they're missing out on this gigantic this gigantic thing that's a part of our life. And there's no way that any one of those 99.5% people at home would settle with a crappy tube TV, right? Because they know the great video out there and they're, they're used to it, right? But with audio, if you're not used to it, you don't know it exists. So, you know, no harm, no foul. It doesn't really matter until you experience it. So, like I said, guys out there that think your UHFS system is awesome and your your cheap upgrades with you know Light Harmonics or some of these other brands out there, it gets so much better. You just have to experience it. And um, again, for me, like I said, those systems are just nails on a chalkboard. I can't really listen to them because it's just depressing. It's like. Right now, since we have, you know, 4K, 8K laser projection, we have all these different video qualities. Imagine watching a DLP TV, watching a sports game on a DLP TV. How long do you think that you could physically do that? I don't know, a minute if you're desperate and you really want to see what's going on. Other than that, you're going to be like, I can't watch this, right? Because you're used to what great quality is. Same thing with the car. You know, guys with your UHFS system or factory or whatever you have, Guys, it gets way better. Um, so that's pretty much the entirety of the system. Again, some sound treatment, sound dampening of the doors here. As you see, we take off the inner door skin, do the whole entire uh, outer door skin of the car. Uh, we address the full inner skin and really make sure that these doors become enclosures. And um, by doing that, making the speaker adapters out of a good material like acrylic, make sure that there's not going to be any resonations it makes the door more solid um, really creates enclosures within the door and obviously when you have one rattle in a car it kills the whole sound stage because now you're isolating where that speaker is playing so like i said we really address the doors we address the dashboard when we take it out uh, for the sound treatment behind a lot of these really thin plastic panels like your door sill your kick panel your uh, B pillars, your C pillars. So a lot of these get sound treated as well. Um, but like with every system, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Um, I really want to educate the public and you know a lot of enthusiasts out there on guys it gets way better right take a chance do an upgrade hopefully with the with the right people who are educated on tuning DSP who are putting this equipment in because again you know if if a speaker's not installed right or if a speaker's out of phase or the phasing's incorrect or if the time alignment's wrong in the car all this stuff is gonna can make the best speaker sound like crap so trust and believe in who is doing your work for you do your homework make sure it's somebody who knows what they're doing because again you don't want to take a car like this or any car I mean really because it's all hard-earned money for each individual person and you don't want to mutilate I've seen a lot of bad stuff out there I've seen a lot of crazy stuff but like I said just do your homework if you're interested in myself doing something for you guys uh, you can hit me up here is my work email you can email me just, you know, what car you have, what kind of job you want to do, what your expectations are, and we can go from there. You can also call my phone. This is my work number here. I can take this and you guys can chat if you have any questions on a build or, like I said, want to chat about something that you want to do. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. Three different handles here. Here's my personal one here, followed by the two work handles, sound effects, home car, and mosaic underscore design check out the website we just launched this it basically has all the cars that we've done they're in tiered categories and you can see the entire build logs of each car which is really cool so like the behind the scenes pictures that i overlay in videos like this and a lot of pictures don't make it into these videos but you can see the full build logs of all these cars especially we've done tons of teslas so if you're a tesla owner obviously you clicked on this video because you might have a tesla um, we've done a lot of big jobs in teslas a lot of small jobs in teslas but you can see a lot of different tiered versions of this car that we've done so you can kind of get a grasp on what we could do for you i never duplicate any design everything is always going to be engineered for you so again guys i really appreciate it and until the next one i'll see you later